What's going on guys? Welcome or welcome back to Little Helpful Files. My name is Lindsay and we do cash budgeting, mini savings challenges, and just life in general all through the glory and by the grace of God. Today we are going to be talking about seven different tips to help you spend less. So these are going to be some frugal habits that we practice and it is from a Christian perspective of course, but I think that these will be some great um, concepts for you to keep on the side, keep as a resource, and just remind you guys of different ways throughout the year that you can cut back and save a little bit of extra money. So let's go ahead and start to dive into this. First, I hope you join me as I pray. Dear God, Lord, thank you so much for this day and thank you for this time together. Father, I just pray that you will speak through me. Holy Spirit, I pray you will lead and guide the words that I have to help and encourage the person that is listening on the other end of this, Lord. This channel is here to help people get out of debt, but to seek you first and foremost. So I pray that these tips will do just that, Lord. Help to point them back to you, but to give them some great ways to steward over the things that they have in the best way possible and to get them into a position of financial peace, Lord. We know there are so many things that come against us each day, and we know that prices of things are just continuing to rise with inflation. So God, we just pray that we can um, find unique ways and get creative to combat those things and to ultimately put our faith and our trust and our hope in you because you always provide our needs. God, I thank you so much for the ability to do this. We love you. We thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. We thank you, Jesus, for the gift of salvation that you freely give us. We love you so much. We praise you, and in Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right, so first up, what are we gonna be talking about? I mean, food, right? Food prices are crazy, so I am gonna be spending a little bit of time on the food. So the first thing would be trying to eat as many meals at home as possible. And I think that one of the things that helped us shift because we used to eat out all the time, like so much money was being spent eating out. And we actually started to think um, about eat, making the meals and eating at home as kind of a challenge because we were able to start making recipes or finding different things that tasted just like you would get maybe out at the restaurant, but for a fraction of the price. So I always like to do that and, and kind of Think of making the meals at home in that type of challenge way, you know, give yourself kind of a, a goal or mission um, to do that and to see what you can achieve and accomplish. And you might actually find that you enjoy making those meals and um, doing that at home more. The other benefit to this is there are so many wonderful conversations that can happen around the dinner table. So I think it's really important um, you know, to be in our homes with our families, inviting people in, you can have some great gospel conversations and just so much that opens up, you know, through that. So it's a really good way, not only to save money, but to also just listen to other people's stories and share your faith and get to hear their faith and, and do all of that together. So the second point would be doing freezer meals. And this may seem like a lot, but if you just take like one day out of the week and you do some recipes for these freezer meals, you can put them in a Ziploc bag. And I think that would actually help with the desire to eat out or like stop and get fast food on the way. Because if you already have something prepared and all you have to do is throw it in a crock pot, it's gonna make it so much more manageable. We were so blessed. We were given a lot of freezer meals when I was on bed rest. And um, it was actually one of the most amazing things to have that I've actually continued doing this. So I took a lot of the recipes, I found some new recipes, and we stock up, you know, a couple different freezer meals for the week. And all you have to do is the night before, just take it out. Um, we usually let it thaw before we go to bed, we put it in the fridge, and then that next day it is ready to go in the crock pot. And by dinner time, you already have your dinner ready to go. It just makes it so much easier. And again, it helps to prevent that need or desire to have to go and pick something up. So you really do end up saving money with that. Okay, so while we're still on the topic of food, because again, this is probably one of the biggest expenses that most people have. I know that it was for us. It was a huge part of our budget. I mean, it still is, but we've cut back a lot. Um, so number three would be bulk buying. 
And I would love to share with you guys the Azure standard. So this is something I had looked at. I saw other YouTubers um, talking about it and I just never really went forward with actually ordering, but I'm really excited because their prices are awesome. If you guys can find a local drop location where you can pick up, um, it is seriously going to save you so much money. Now, yes, you have to pay that upfront cost to purchase the items in bulk, but let me just give you an example. So we had just bought some honey. We use honey all the time. I love using honey in my tea because I can't drink coffee right now um, with nursing. And we also make homemade granola bars that we use honey in. So we're going through a lot of honey and we had bought a two pound jar of honey for $17. Okay. If you go on the Azure standard website, we were able to just buy a 12 pound jar for $34. Okay. 12 pounds of honey for $34. That is a great deal fraction of the price. So I would recommend using the bulk buying for things like toiletries, pantry staples. So think about, you know, flour and salt and sugar, um, maybe beans, um, anything that you can think of that you would use long term. We actually like to buy oats that way. Um, but there's nuts might be a good idea if you like to have that incorporated in. But that's a great option for you to buy them in a cheaper price because when you buy it at bulk like that, you get it for so much less. And then you also have it for a while. You don't have to keep going back to the store to buy these things. So if you're in the store less, you're going to be spending less because I don't know about you, but if I go into the grocery store, I just, I end up spending more. I'm so bad at sticking to a list. So it's better for me to just stay out, <laughs> stay out of the grocery store. If you guys are interested in that, make sure that you click the link below and I would so appreciate your support. Um, I do get commission from some of the links that I have down in the description below, but I really encourage you guys to give it a try if you've been um, kind of on the fence about doing that. Now, number four. So this is a hard one, but it's really important as you continue, as you seek Jesus more, I think you will have less of a difficulty with this one. And that is not worrying about having the latest and the greatest, okay? And this is like technology, cars, uh, electronics, whatever it may be. We really stopped doing all of that. We stopped buying into it. Um, I've had the same phone for, gosh, I don't know, like four or five years now. Now, is it working the best? No, it's having some issues because of course that's just how Apple does it. Um, every time the iOS systems update, the phones seem to like struggle, but it still works. It still functions. We make do. Um, our car we bought in cash, paid off, don't have a car loan. And these things were something that we were constantly seeking. Like we were every year wanting to upgrade, wanting the next thing. But that was because we were putting so much into that. We thought that that was going to, you know, give us this like happiness or joy. But when you have the joy from the Lord and when you seek Jesus each and every day and you're being filled up from scripture and just seeking God, I don't think that you really crave these things as much. It really just takes that desire or, or that need away. And, you know, we want to have the things that we need. We want to be able to meet our needs and our children's needs, but we also um, want to be able to give to others. We want, you know, to do things different with our money than we did before. So I think that finding that contentment, which we're going to read here real quick for this, I'm reading in Hebrews. This is Hebrews 13, five, make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have for he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. And being content with these things and also then knowing and remembering that like God provides and when we continue to seek his presence and rest in him, I think that we will really not have this issue and um, this struggle with it. You know, that contentment becomes easier and easier as we realize those things are just never going to bring the satisfaction that we're seeking in them. They just aren't. Our satisfaction, you know, again, comes first and foremost from seeking Jesus each and every day. So number five is one that I don't feel like is talked about a lot, but this is something that my husband and I have noticed. And that is just basically shopping around and changing up your car insurance or home insurance every like two to three years. And I know that can be a pain because you really want to just stick with, you know, the one that you have, you don't want to have to be changing stuff up, 
but we've realized that the, the longer that you stay with the insurance company, I mean, every year they're increasing your price and your rates. And so if you continue to do this every couple of years and change, you're really able to save and uh, you can actually keep your insurance very close to what it you know originally was. But I think that it's a great tip and a great option if you, especially if you notice your insurance going up a lot. All right, number six. So this one is about using balance transfers. Okay, we've talked about this on the channel before, um, but if you have debt, so let's say you have personal debt, you have credit card debt, and it has high interest, you're actually spending money on that interest, okay? So even if you're making your minimum payments or more than your minimum payments, you are still being charged interest. So what we did and what I recommend you do is use balance transfers with 0%, Yes, there is usually a fee. It's usually like a three or 5% fee. It's not much compared to what you're gonna save with not having that interest charged each month. Like if you have a 22% you know, interest credit card, that's a lot of interest. And then that compounds each month because you're not paying it off each month. Um, the other option is opening up a 0% credit card. And I do have a link below. And if you look into that with the Capital One card, you can get 0%. Um, they do give you some initial cash back if you make a minimum purchase. You'll have to look at the details below. But that is another option, especially if you have maybe upcoming purchases that you know you're gonna have to spend um, or that you know you're gonna have to put on a credit card. Try to do a 0% if at all possible, because again, it's saving you money because even though you don't think about it in that way, you're still paying that interest, right? So it's still coming out of something else. Whereas if you save on that interest, you'll have more money for your food budget, <laughs> maybe, you know, or something like that. Um, so I highly recommend doing that. It works really well. We used a spreadsheet when we were kind of doing it and tracking it. So that way we knew when the balance transfer was going to expire because it usually gives you about um, anywhere from 12 to 18 months on these zero percents, but you wanna make sure you pay it off beforehand. If you are not going to be able to, make sure that you have another balance transfer that has a 0% offer ready to go that you can transfer that amount to. That is truly how we got out of the $22,000 of debt. I have a video on that from a while back, um, but it really does help and it really does work. All right, number seven, our last um, tip and habit that I would say is really, really crucial and, and very important is a no spend month. So this is something you could do throughout the year, especially on months where you know maybe you don't have as much coming up um, and you can really just try to cut everything back and not spend any excess money. So of course you're still gonna be spending on like grocery and gas and your necessities, but you're gonna be cutting out any of those other um, discretionary purchases and, and extra items. So. I would say, you know, obviously don't do this when you know that you have like a lot of things, like if you have back to school stuff and you're gonna be needing to get supplies or if you have a lot of like birthdays. I wouldn't do it during those months personally because I just feel like it's so hard. You end up feeling more shame and you shouldn't feel shame over it, you know, because those are things that you know you're gonna have to spend money on. So I try to do it on kind of slower months. So that way I really give myself a challenge and instead of in those idle months, having moments where I'm like, oh, well, maybe I'm going to shop or go on Amazon or go spend and buy this. Why don't you use that time to try to give yourself an extra boost of savings to then put towards whatever expenses you have, you know, coming up for the next month. So look at your calendar, look through the year, see what maybe month or two months would be good for a no spend month and try to implement that. I really hope that these tips have helped you guys. I hope they've given you some things to think on. Um, I really appreciate you all tuning into the video and I just want to continue to encourage you guys on your debt-free journey and to be able to find financial peace. That is why I started this channel in the first place. And so I just wanna make sure that I am doing my role here and serving you guys with some content to give you tips and tricks in order to make that happen. All right. I appreciate you guys. I love y'all. And I pray that you will find the peace of the Lord through all of this. May God just continue to bring you blessings and may you seek him constantly lean on him through all of this. Um, you know, just ask him to help you through some of these things. And hopefully we can all get to a point where we are living in our financial peace and debt free. All right. I'll see you guys in a video soon. God bless.